Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this lecture, we'll begin looking at the process and the purpose of fertilization. And we're looking at sea urchin fertilization in this lecture as an example of an organism in which fertilization is external, and that presents its own set of challenges. The purpose of fertilization is obviously the creation of a new organism, but fertilization allows this organism to form through a process that allows for an increase in genetic diversity. That's because it brings together alleles from two different organisms. So fertilization also accomplishes the purpose of creating more genetic diversity. Different organisms utilize different strategies for fertilization, but there are major events that take place in the fertilization of all animals, regardless of species. These events include the contact and the recognition between the sperm and the egg. Once the sperm and the egg make contact, they need to fuse, but the entry of the sperm needs to be regulated to prevent more than one sperm from uniting with one egg. Once the sperm enters the egg, the genetic materials from the two different haploid cells needs to fuse, and that can happen at slightly different stages for different species. Finally, the metabolism of the now fertilized egg needs to be activated in order to begin the process of development. And in many organisms, the fusion of the sperm and egg nucleus, the pronuclei as they're called, happens at around the same time that the activation of the egg's metabolism is taking place. When the sperm enters the egg, the male and female pronuclei migrate toward each other, and that migration can take a period of time. So that means that the egg's metabolism may have already been activated prior to this fusion of the male and female pronuclei taking place. And the activation of the egg's metabolism refers in part to the activation of protein and membrane biosynthesis. Before we discuss the processes at play during fertilization, let's begin by looking at the morphology of the germ cells. The sperm have to be able to migrate to the egg, and to do that effectively, the sperm shed most of their cytoplasm during the process of maturation. The DNA of the sperm also becomes tightly compacted, and that actually helps to streamline the nucleus. Another modification that helps make the sperm better suited to its function, which is largely delivering that genetic material to the oocyte, is the formation of the acrosomal vesicle. And that's a sac of enzymes that is derived from the Golgi apparatus, and it's located, as you can see, at the very tip of the sperm. When the sperm makes contact with the egg, the acrosomal contents are released to help the sperm digest a path through the extracellular coating of the egg. Between the acrosomal vesicle and the nucleus, there is globular acting, and this is acting that has not yet polymerized to form a filament. But when the sperm makes contact with the egg, the globular acting polymerizes into filamentous acting, and it forms this finger-like projection that's known as the acrosomal process. The acrosomal process is not only important for helping the sperm to digest a path through the outer coatings of the egg, but it also contains a newly exposed membrane. And that newly exposed membrane has proteins that, as we'll see later, help the sperm to attach to the egg. The function of the sperm is also aided by the localization of mitochondria in the cell. Mitochondria are actually able to move along microtubules within cells, and they use motor proteins, and that allows them to become localized to specific regions of the cell where energy is needed. So moving the mitochondria to the base of the flagellum in sperm will serve to provide energy that's needed to power the movements of the flagellum. The flagella acts as the propulsion system for the sperm, and it's composed of an axoneme, which is a structure that consists of nine doublets of microtubules, with two microtubules in the center. As you can see, the doublets of microtubules are linked to each other, or perhaps you can't see that here. In addition to microtubules, the axoneme also contains motor proteins, and these are known as ciliary dynines and they protrude from one microtubule doublet to the adjacent microtubule doublet. The bending of the flagella results because the ciliary dining, which is the motor protein, it's displayed here, 
causes the microtubule doublets to slide past each other. But because the microtubule doublets are actually linked together, the sliding is converted into bending. And the sea urchin and sperm that are released into the environment are mature and they're actually able to fertilize the egg. However, that's not the case for mammals. In mammals, the sperm that are ejaculated are not able to fuse with the egg. They're not fully mature. The last stage of their maturation happens actually within the reproductive tract of the female. And it's not an instantaneous process. Sometimes it can take a couple of days. And although these sperm are able to move, they need to undergo a series of changes which are collectively called capacitation. And these changes are going to allow the sperm to bind to and fuse with the egg. We'll discuss the changes that occur during capacitation in detail when we cover the specifics of mammalian fertilization.